Back in 2013, Smash 4 was announced. Well, kinda. It was actually announced all the way back in 2011, but I suppose that is besides the point. As the release date approached, they slowly gave out information about the game and revealed new characters. At the time, I was not really into Smash competitively, though during the later years of Brawl, I did play the game in what could be considered a more competitive way. But I never really considered ever having a main character to focus on. I just kinda played the ones I liked. As time went on, I slowly started to enjoy playing Smash in a more serious manner. So when Smash 4 was on the horizon, I was ready to give it a real shot. But I was still not sure what character I should main. There was no character that really spoke to me that much. However, that was all about the change. When I saw the reveal trailer for Little Mac, there was just something about this character that appealed to me. I couldn't tell you exactly what, but there was just something about him that told me that this is the character you should main. And, well, so I did. It had a lot of ups and downs, and it was certainly not always easy, but I stuck to my gut feeling. And I did, in fact, main Little Mac for the entirety of Smash 4. And I learned a lot of things from that. Some things not even related to Smash. But also a lot of things related to the gameplay of Smash as a whole. And I learned a lot about Little Mac, naturally enough. And that's what I want to talk about here today. So allow me to tell you the story of Little Mac in Smash, and why it's a bit of a sad one. Smash 4 released, and right off the bat, Lil Mac was like the best character in the game. You know, according to random people on For Glory, which is my favorite source for accurate information. In reality, however, Lil Mac was just. alright. He certainly did benefit from an unoptimized gameplay, and seeing how the 3DS version released before the Wii U version, he also got to take advantage of people not having preferred controllers, which was a bit of a boon for him. Though his glaring weakness still shined through in many ways. What most people will probably point to is his recovery being just okay distance-wise. I mean, it was relatively bad, but it was at least serviceable. Exploitable is really the more appropriate word here. Then they nerfed it, reducing the distance on his aerial side B and toning down some of his damage output. Now, despite popular belief, these nerfs were actually not that substantial. They obviously were not really warranted, but I do believe that even if it was not nerfed, it would not have changed how the character turned out in the end. I see these nerves more as a moral blow towards the people who wanted to play the character seriously, because interest certainly did drop after this. Now, this didn't sway me, however. Like I said, I stuck with him for the entirety of the game. But as the years went by, I started to notice how truly flawed of a character Little Mac really was. I'm usually a pretty optimistic person, so I would always push these thoughts to the back of my mind and say, I could have played that better and stuff like that. And in a lot of these cases that is obviously true, but I also realized that there was a greater problem with this character. Smash 4 came and went and my thoughts did not really change, but I did keep them to myself, not wanting to discourage more people from playing the character. And so I might as well mention this here. That is not the point of this video. I am making this video mostly because I think the topic is interesting and worthy of discussion. But what I talk about here today is something I think would be helpful even if you are dead set on maining Little Mac. Now, let's resume our story around the time that Ultimate was unveiled. Not the teaser, but the actual unveiling of the game. Around this time, I was still very much in the optimistic mindset when it came to Mac. I suppose you don't need more evidence than the old Mac in Smash Ultimate video I did a while back. While I was certainly quite a bit more optimistic than I am now, because, you know, why wouldn't I be? There was a brand new Smash game and by all accounts Little Mac looked to be buffed and improved upon. These were of course all surface level impressions, since the game was not out yet. In truth, it was far from as bright as we made it out to be. But I guess it's about time I get into the real topic of this video. Why Little Mac is a character that just doesn't work. I'll basically be doing an in-depth character analysis of Little Mac and also be looking at some of the changes that were made from Smash 4 to Ultimate and how they tie together. Just so we can paint the complete picture. I'll be talking about both Smash 4 and Ultimate, though Smash 4 is a little more important because it is the game Mac was designed for. So to understand the thought behind him, most of the general analysis will be made with Smash 4 in mind, seeing how this is also by far the game I have the most experience with. Of course I'll get into Ultimate as well, seeing how this is the current version of Mac. And a lot of the general design behind him has not changed and applies to both games. So don't worry about that. In any case, why don't we start with the design. It's pretty clear that Mac is supposed to be a trade-off character, a glass cannon of sorts, having very distinct weaknesses and strengths. Now, there is a lot of characters in Smash that are good at some things and bad at others, but none are as extreme and as deliberate as the case with Little Mac. His entire character idea is that he's supposed to be good on the ground and bad in the air. Sounds pretty simple in concept, 
So let's have a look at how they went about doing this. In the air, he is virtually useless. His aerials are slow, deal very little damage, are relatively laggy, and overall do nothing to pressure in the air. Offstage, he drops like a brick and has a very exploitable recovery. They did kinda buff his side B in ultimate, but I'll get more into that in a bit. On the ground, he has very quick grounded movement, fast normals with good power behind them, and strong smash attacks that can really do some damage. They also have super armor, making them able to tank through any hitbox sent their way. So on a surface level, it looks like mech should work just as planned. Though if it were only that simple, I would not be talking about it here today. The problem is that the air is an invaluable resource in a game like Smash. While it is usually regarded to be a less safe position as opposed to the ground, seeing how you no longer have access to your shield. It is still an extremely important resource for movement, positioning, and pressure. You know, granted that your character actually has functional aerials. In the air, Lil Mac is completely helpless. He has an extremely hard time getting back to the ground when hit into the air. He has almost no tools to safely make it back and lacks the air drift to get anywhere after getting hit, making follow-ups and continued juggling very easy on him. His bad gravity makes him linger in the air for a long time before getting any downward momentum. And once he starts falling, he drops like a brick. This combined with bad air acceleration make it very easy to catch his landings and keep the pressure up. Seeing how he has no good aerials, he can't threaten or compete with any other aerials in the game. You either have to drift towards the ledge and hope you can grab it, which is not a particularly better position to be in all things considered, or air darts to the ground and hope you get through. He has a counter, but a counter is not really a solution to a bad disadvantage. Sure, it can help you sometimes, but it's not really something you can rely on. And it doesn't really help that the counter is one of the weakest and least versatile in the game. It's a panic option, a bad, predictable one, but it's something nonetheless. Neutral B is kind of in the same boat. It has 8% of heavy armor, meaning it's capable of tanking some aerials that deal less than 8%. But the problem is that in Smash 4, the amount of lag after the move is probably gonna get you punished anyways. And in Ultimate, everything deals a lot more damage, making the heavy armor almost irrelevant even though you can actually shield cancel it in ultimate. Lil Mag has by far the worst disadvantage state in the game, and if you can't tell, that's really not a good thing. But this is just a single of the many cards he has stacked against him. Since I'm already talking about his air game, I guess I kinda have to touch on his recovery as well. As you probably know, it is less than stellar, but honestly not as bad as you might think. Having two different options is a big virtue, and will at least allow you to mix up your recovery. In Ultimate, this is a little different, but I'll get into that when I talk about his moves individually. They obviously still lack the distance to make them anything more than just passable, but all things considered, they could have been worse. Again, exploitable really is the more appropriate word. In a vacuum, his recovery is alright, but it's really easy to intercept for a lot of characters due to its linear nature. So his recovery is certainly subpar compared to most other characters in the game, but it's not unusable. So let's return to the core concept of having Lil Mac be good on the ground, but bad in the air. Well, surely that must mean that he is really great on the ground, seeing how they completely stripped him of any air versatility. Well, the thing is, he's not even really that great on the ground, all things considered. Because I guess grab is considered an aerial, because my god, his grab is bad. It has awful range and very slow frame data, and you don't even get anything off of it should you manage to land the damn thing. I really don't understand why they made his grab so bad. It's a vital part of a good ground game. Having a way to deal with shields is such an important tool to have, especially in Smash 4, where shields are extremely good. Not having a good grab is a huge burden to any character. It just cuts off a lot of mix-up potential, and just makes neutral a lot harder to play. If that wasn't enough, his grounded movement is honestly not really that great. His running and walk speed are very quick, but his initial dash is very wide. Too wide in a lot of cases, making it easy to overshoot to targets if you dash. This makes the dash very committal, and since he can't just jump and fade back or space with an aerial, he basically has to either shield, spot dart or roll to cancel the dash which becomes predictable after a while. Speaking of his role, it's probably one of the roles I've heard the most praise of over the years, with people saying it's just so good. And, well, it's not. Max role has the worst intangibility in the game, with only 8 frames of intangibility as opposed to most other characters 10 to 12 frames. It's not any faster than any other role in the game in terms of lag either. The only thing it's got going for it is that it's a very wide role, that covers a lot of distance. Though this again causes problems because of the animation the role has. The amount of distance Mac moves before he even gets any intangibility is very problematic. This causes him to roll directly into attacks he otherwise would be out of range of. It's actually a pretty big problem for him. Now, having a not so great role is usually not a huge deal for most characters, but Mac actually really needs it. 
Since he is basically locked to the ground in terms of movement, he's very dependent on his role to get out of pressure situations. I mean, his role is serviceable, and it's not like you really have a choice, you just kind of have to use it. But it's pretty far from great. Aside from his grab being bad, his other ground moves are, all things considered, not really that outstanding. Sure, they are good, but they're not nearly enough to compensate for all that he loses out on, not having all the assets I've talked about earlier. I'll go more into this when I talk about his moves in depth. But overall, he's just not compensated enough for how much is taken away from him. And the real stinger is that the concept of good on the ground is a bit of a fallacy. Because being good on the ground pretty much means nothing. When it comes to playing neutral, it doesn't really matter whether you're using aerials or grounded moves, as long as those moves are effective. I would consider Mac better on the ground than a character like Smash 4 Sheik, but I still think Sheik has a vastly better neutral advantage and disadvantage state than Mac, because her neutral has much more variance to it, and she has a lot more tools to play with, with moves that are equally and maybe even better than a lot of Mac's ground moves. And at that point, what has Mac truly gained by giving up the air to have a so-called good grounded game? Enough talking about Lil Mac in a general sense, let's get into the more finer details. Despite all the things he misses out on, what he has is not worthless. It is, in fact, quite good. In a vacuum, of course. His down tilt is probably his best move overall, it's by far the most important tool he has and is vital to his playstyle. It not only allows for some really strong combos, but is also one of the few safe neutral options he has. The move has the non-rebound ability trait, which means it can't be interrupted by moves with a certain damage threshold which is a huge help when dealing with grounded characters. Though it doesn't really work with aerials as they don't really clank the way grounded moves do. This move was deliberately designed to combo into side B, which made for a very strong damage combo. It could even set up into an up B for a kill confirm at higher percents. It was an excellent move. His up tilt was also pretty good. It's not as safe or as versatile, but it did work well with perfect pivoting. It was decent for anti-airing, but didn't have a ton of combo potential. It had the non-rebound ability trait, which combined with dealing a good amount of damage made it good for spacing against grounded opponents. F-Tilt was alright. It was one of Mac's many kill options, having some solid power behind it. The move also had the non-rebound ability, which worked great on F-Tilt seeing how it has two hitboxes. It wasn't particularly safe, but it was good when it worked. I say when it worked, because this is a great time to bring up Mac's hitboxes, and uh, why they're not so great. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this since I did make an entire video talking about this subject, so if you want to know more about the details, I suggest you go watch that. Though the quick rundown is that F-Tilt has a really bad habit of dropping the second hit, the one that actually kills. Most of Mac's hitboxes, with the exception of Down Tilt and Up Tilt, have some really weird quirks that made the move unreliable or inconsistent. It's a shame, but I've covered this in much more in-depth in the hitbox video, so uh, let's move on. Okay, so before we talk about his smash attacks, I want to say something. Super armor is a bad substitute for range. Now let me explain. The entire reason why Mac has super armor in the first place is because he has terrible range. There's usually two different ways you can go about dealing with range. You either space around it, or use your own range to deal with it. He can't really use the air, making approaching a character with range much more difficult. And he has pretty much no range to speak of. Sure, his ground speed is very fast, and he can get in if you pick your openings. But that sadly is not that useful when your out-of-shield options are bad. So what did they do? Well, they gave him super armor on his smash attacks. And it does help, sure, but it's hardly a solution. If Mac wants to challenge zoners, he has to basically rely on the super armor. And at that point, not only does he have to time his attacks so that the armor hits on the frame the move hits him, but he also still takes full damage from the attack. It's also way more risky since his smash attacks are quite laggy as well, making any whiff punishable. Whereas a lot of aerials allow for safe pressure and spacing. With that said, his smash attacks are still pretty good overall. They deal a lot of damage and knockback and, well, they do have armor. Even if it might not be as good as it seems. His aerials are honestly not even worth talking about. They're just bad, and there is pretty much always a better option than to be going for one of them. Nair is frame 2, which makes it the fastest aerial in the game, which is cool, I guess. It can be used for combo breaking since it's so fast, but since the move is always negative on hit, if your opponent buffers anything after Nair, they will just hit you again anyways. 
In almost all situations where Nair would be useful, you could always just go for an up B instead, which has a bigger hitbox as well as frame 1 intangibility. The rest of them are just unusable outside of very specific situations, so uh, moving on. His grab is basically worthless. None of his throws combo or kill at any reasonable percent. It's very slow and the grab range is honestly laughable, which is a huge shame because if Mag had a good grab or at least got anything off of it, then it would help him a ton when it comes to just having options. But as it stands, grab is a mix-up you might go for every once in a while. And even then it's risky, and doesn't even really pay off should you manage to land it. Dash tech is pretty good. It's very fast and a good option for catching landings. It's one of the few options Mac has out of his dash. Though it's not really that safe, but you can cross up on shields. But for the most part it's a situational move. It doesn't really kill unless you have a lot of rage or is close to the ledge. Though it's a decent burst option, if your opponent is in lag outside of tilt range. His jab is a bit of a mixed bag. The hitbox was very wonky at times and often would have issues with leading into itself. The first to hit worked fine for the most part, but the gentleman and the rapid jab would often fail to connect. Not to mention that rapid jab didn't have enough hit stun to combo into itself, meaning that characters with fast moves or invincibility could just escape by mashing a move and often deal some damage to mech in the process. But nonetheless it was a great move. I mean, Mac doesn't really need a frame 1 jab, since all of his other tilts are so fast that you can often just use those. And in most cases they have much better range. But what made Jab really useful was the fact that it could actually kill confirm into up B, which was tremendously helpful for clearing out stocks that live past the down tilt to up B window. It was also more reliable because of it not sending up at an angle like down tilt did. It was probably one of my favorite things about Smash 4 Little Mac. Having a frame 1 kill confirm is nothing to scoff at. It was just great. What more can I say? His specials are actually quite underwhelming. If I have to be honest, this is where I really feel like they dropped a ball when designing his moves. His neutral B is virtually useless. It might just be one of the worst moves in all of Smash. Especially considering how his non-aerial moves are supposed to be, you know, above average or at least half functional for that matter. They did make it chill cancelable in ultimate, but you can only do it like 40 frames into the charge, and like I said it still has heavy armor, but seeing how everything deals more damage in this game, it's almost irrelevant. The shield cancel doesn't really make the move any more useful anyways, it's still just very bad. The only redeemable quality about it is that under certain conditions it turns into KO Punch, which is something I've been waiting to bring up. KO Punch is supposed to be Mac's big, fancy comeback mechanic. And sure, it is extremely powerful. It can almost single-handedly win you a game if used at the perfect moment. However, finding that perfect moment is quite a rarity. And this is only granted if you actually land it. Which is not really as easy as you might think. The only point where KO Punch is really worth going for is if you just KO at your opponent and they are on a fairly fresh stock and you can afford to miss it. Since if you miss it and you are over 70% it's basically a lost stock. Because of the huge amount of end lag the move has. And if your opponent is above 60% then it's simply not worth the risk. Since you would be able to finish off your opponent in a few more conversions anyways. And this is again offset by the fact that you have very little control over when you actually get KO Punch. The KO meter is based on how much damage you deal and receive, with receiving being the more predominant factor. You also lose KO Punch after a few seconds if you are hit with a move strong enough to cause knockback. So it's not like you can just hang on to it and wait for the optimal time to use it. This often leads you to just having to fire it off as soon as you get it. And if it's not a good time for that, you'll likely just not use it or make a really risky play. Which might lose you the game outright. It's high risk, high reward. And in a game which requires consistency above all else, it's honestly not going to be that great in the long run. I would lie if I said KO Punch hasn't gotten me out of some bad situations. And even won me entire sets, I might not have won otherwise. But I still don't think it's much of a compensation for not having aerials. KO Punch is basically a worse version of Waft, which is just better in almost every single way. You have complete control over when you get Waft and when you want to use it. And in Ultimate, the kill potential is very similar between the two, taking into account that Wario have way more setups and positioning potential that Mac has. And Wario doesn't really have any drawbacks from having it either. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that KO Punch really is not all that great. His Town B is a counter, and it's as bland as it gets. It's pretty weak all things considered and there's nothing else about it that makes it interesting. In Smash 4, a game filled with broken counters, 
at least it wasn't the worst counter in the game. That award belonged to Palutena, but in Ultimate they buffed that counter, so now I can finally say that Mac probably has the single worst counter in the game. It's more disappointing than anything else, honestly. They could have made a really cool down special for him, but they went the lazy route and gave him a plain old counter. I mean, a counter does have versatility, sure. It can help you land since you don't really have a lot of options anyway, but I can't help but think of all the cool things they could have given him instead of a counter. Oh well. His side B is alright. It's not very useful in most situations because of the large amount of lag it has. Meaning you basically have to go for a read or know you can punish with it in time, if you want to use it. As a recovery tool it is of course very useful, but I've already talked plenty about that so I'll just stick to the non-recovery versatility. It's fairly fast and the hitbox is actually pretty good, so it's good for punishing up close on a whiffed move. It deals a lot of damage and actually has kill potential, and can be comboed into from up tilt and down tilt. What I like about this move is that it is at least in concept made to specifically help with a problem Mac has. Side B was designed to deal with projectiles, something Mac naturally has problems with. You can even see this in his character trailer. Granted, it's not really that great at dealing with projectiles. The leap Mac makes is just too short to get over a majority of the projectiles, and the partial intangibility he gets is not really enough. Even if this was not the case, you still have to predict them throwing out a projectile, since the later part of the move is quite slow and laggy. But at least I can appreciate the thought behind it, so it's a pretty good move. But again, just being good is not enough. Mac's grounded moves have to be great, if he even wants a chance to compensate for all his shortcomings. Lastly, there is a B, which I don't have that much to say about. Aside from being a vital recovery component, the move is rather one-dimensional. The only other notable use for it is being Max Fast's out of shield option and being a part of the very important down tilt to up B kill confirm. It also makes for a risky but great combo breaking move, but aside from that it doesn't have a lot going on. The keyword to Max design is unsynergistic. He has a lot of good moves that are fine on their own, but he really lacks the chemistry between them that a character like him really needs. And even some of his moves don't really feel like they have his core character concept in mind. The biggest offender being Neutral B and Down B, which are both moves with almost no usage area beyond their very narrow intended purpose. Except Neutral B, which is just 100% useless, like, all the time. And again, might be one of the single worst moves in all of Smash history. Overall, Mag's moves are good, but just not good enough. Some of them are outright terrible, but he does have some that are really useful. But like I've said many times, they're just not good enough to be able to work around the massive flaw of having no aerial presence. I'm not sure if they made him like this because they thought this was enough to compensate, or that they were just too scared to potentially push too hard and end up with a broken character. I could believe both. But seeing how Mac was actually nerfed in one of the first patches of Smash 4, I honestly don't really know. But to most people, it was pretty clear as time went on that Mac was really not a big threat, and was in many ways very underpowered. Smash 4 came and went, and Mac never really made much of a splash. There were some good players playing him, but none were able to really make any high-ranking placings. And even with him receiving some minor buffs here and there over Smash 4's lifetime, it was never anything near substantial enough to make him viable. Which finally brings us to Ultimate, where this sad story becomes a bit of a tragedy. Alright, let's leave Smash 4 behind forever, and talk about Ultimate. We'll start by covering the direct and indirect changes that were made from Smash 4 to Ultimate. In Smash 4, as you probably know by now, Mac was not great by any means. But he did have some stuff going for him. He had some solid combos out of down tilt with side B doing tons of damage and up B serving as a kill confirm at higher percents. They were all fairly safe when spaced well, though obviously he still suffered from a lot of the fundamental design flaws I listed earlier, as well as just having a very poor disadvantage state. However, the few things he did have were strong enough to at least make him a functional character. And then, in Ultimate, they took it all away. Downtill got 6 more frames of lag along with overall less shield stun, completely destroying Mac's single greatest asset and vital component to having the slightest sense of a combo game. Downtill to up B? Gone. Downtill to fair as a tech chase setup? Gone. Downtill to side B? Well, it kinda works. Kinda. But for the most part, you get nothing. They even made it so it can't combo into itself on fast fallers because of the increased space knockback. They just kill down tilt, and I don't know why. How about up tilt? It's basically the same as in Smash 4, except it's bad! It can't combo, and on lower percent, it's almost negative on hit. It can't even combo into itself anymore, which is just baffling. 
It can at least still serve its purpose as a get off me option, but you can actually get punished for just landing the move unless you instantly shield. And again, it's just not as good as the Smash 4 counterpart. It even deals less damage in this game, which is strange because everything else seems to deal more damage in this game. There's no reason why this move should be worse than it was in Smash 4. In fact, it really should be better. This was the chance to fix Mac, not further destroy what he had left. I just don't get it. F-Tilt is the only tilt they didn't change much about, which in this case is almost a bad thing, because it somehow still has the exact same problems it did back in Smash 4, with the two hits not connecting properly. <sighs> In any case, before I get more into the move details, I guess I should talk about how Ultimate compares to Smash 4. Well, one of the huge things is of course the new movement, which I do believe Mac benefits a lot from. Being able to do tilts out of runs is probably the biggest buff Mac has ever gotten, and that wasn't even an intentional buff, but a global change that just happened to work out for him. And I mean, it's not a huge change either way since Mac already had pretty good ground movement options in Smash 4, with extended dash dancing and perfect pivoting. But at least it's a change that benefits Mac more than a lot of other characters, which is not something we'll be seeing a lot of sadly. I can't tell if this is the reason why they decided to nerf his tilts. Maybe they thought he would be too powerful with a new movement system if he retained his old combos and kill confirms. Your guess is as good as mine. Either way, it's pretty clear that the new movement system alone is not really enough, and the tilt nerfs far outweigh the movement buffs. When I first saw that directional air dodging was returning to ultimate, I thought it had the potential to really make a change for Mac. After all, one of Mac's big problems is landing and getting out of pressured situations. So a directional air dodge would surely be great for him, I mean, alright, I'll stop being coy and cut to the chase here. Mac has the single worst directional air dodge in the game. In terms of the distance, it goes Ness and Lucas at the top, then literally everyone else besides Mac and Bayonetta, then Bayonetta, and then Mac all the way at the bottom. It travels almost no distance at all, and if that wasn't enough, it has the most amount of vulnerability frames when trying to grab the ledge after using it. It's a shame that they decided to make Mac the worst at something yet again, especially seeing how this could have made his disadvantage more manageable. The universal reduction of landing lag across the entire cast did Mac no favors at all. This was basically a huge buff towards every other character but Little Mac, which is in a sense then a nerf for Mac. Sure, Mac's aerials did get noticeably less lag, but their hitboxes and power is still very bad, so it's not like they're actually more versatile or even remotely usable as out of some very specific situations. The real blow here is not that that Mac didn't benefit much from the global change, but more so that everyone else did but him. The new buffer system does nothing for Mac. Well, to be honest, the new buffer system doesn't really do anything for, well, anyone. But it can be a huge pain for Mac because of the fact that his recovery is so bad. Like if you try to buffer a shield on landing and you get interrupted and pushed off stage, you'll get an air dodge and just die. As well as a bunch of other bad, dumb things. I guess I can save that for when I inevitably talk about the buffer system in the future. Mac was changed a little bit in terms of attributes. Some good and some bad. He got a bit more weight, which is pretty much just a pure buff. He gets to live longer across the board. It's good. One of his few undeniable buffs. They gave Mac a pretty noticeable airspeed buff, though don't get too excited, because they compensated this by giving him a lot more fall speed as well. He's now the second fastest faller after Fox. Meaning in the air, he does not really travel much farther than he used to, seeing how the distance is offset by the fact that he just has much less air time. He still has very poor air acceleration, so it's not like he has that easy of a time taking advantage of his new airspeed. But the new fall speed does do more harm than good in my opinion. Not only does it just give him less time to mix up his recovery, making him way more predictable offstage, but in Smash 4 he could actually stall in the air and fake people out by using his jump and then air dodge in place. This is basically not possible in Ultimate because of the added lag to neutral air dodge and with the new fall speed he starts falling way before he can use a special to grab the ledge. As well as the fact that he almost can't air dodge off stage at all, which is just obviously not great for a character that has a hard time getting back to the stage. Overall these changes just reduce max options in the air. Even when not off stage, he still has less time to mix up his landings, so yeah, it's a bit of an unfortunate change. With the global and the attribute changes out of the way, it's time to revisit the rest of his moves and see how they stack up. It can't be all bad, can it? Like I explained earlier, his tilts were pretty much ruined. The only one that still has the same functionality as it did in Smash 4 is F-Tilt, which works well and is good, but still has the dropping issues it had before which is just beyond stupid, and I can't believe they have not fixed it by now. 
I really can't explain how huge of a nerf this is. His tilts, down tilts specifically, were the bread and butter of Mac Neutral. It was where he got the most damage the safest way. Up tilt lost a lot of utility, and when used at low percent, it's almost negative on hit, meaning you can get punished just for landing the move. And down tilt got hit the hardest, losing almost all combo potential as well as its kill confirm into up B. And while you can combo down tilt to side B at higher percents as a kill confirm, it's far from reliable. And it's only true at very small percentage windows. It's also DI dependent upon that, so it's far from what I would call a reliable kill setup. On that same note, Jab got some unfortunate changes as well. As a part of the global change to all jabs, Max Jab no longer combos into up B, or anything for that matter. Which leaves Mac with no reliable kill confirms at all. I don't really feel as cheated with this one, however, since it was part of a global change and not something that directly targeted Mac. But it is unfortunate nonetheless. Though they did make one great chance to jab, not only does Rapid Jab now work like it should, but holding down the button now leads to the Gentleman instead of the Rapid Jab, which is nice because that one is generally more effective. Dash Attack is mostly the same, which is weird because most Dash Attacks got buffed to compensate for the new movement mechanics. It still crosses up, however, which is really great, seeing how that is quite a rarity in this game. It's still useful like it was in Smash 4, but still not anything really that outstanding. His smash tags are relatively unchanged, the hitboxes are mostly the same from what it seems like, that meaning the hitboxes are very slim and you can miss when up close like in Smash 4. Aside from that, they work mostly the same, they serve the same function and have the same issues as in Smash 4. Though I will say that they very much benefit from the new dash cancelling mechanics. It makes getting into position for tanking hits and then hitting them with a smash tag a lot easier. Again, I still don't believe that armored smash tags are a good solution for not having range, but at least it's a bit easier to actually use them. His aerials still suck, though because of the new fall speed he can no longer auto cancel forward air and back air on shard up. Which is a huge shame seeing how down tilt to fair still kind of works in this game, but because of no auto cancel, it's much harder to actually get any follow ups afterwards. Because of the reduced landing lag, you can do some cheeky stuff with some landing aerials and maybe get some combos out of it, but good luck landing any of those since the hitboxes still suck. When it comes to his specials, there is actually a fair amount to talk about. I'll start with my favorite change because, yes, there are changes that I like. Neutral B can now be shield cancelled. You can also turn around when letting go of the move. Now, this doesn't really make the move a lot more useful in terms of offense, since it's still really slow and predictable. But it's at least not as two-dimensional as it used to be. You can now try to fake people out with it, and it might even help you land in some cases where you tank a really weak move. It's a buff with no downside, so I can't really complain. And then we get to side B, which got a controversial change to say the least. I've seen people say that this change makes Max recovery actually good, and on the other side, I've seen people that say this makes his recovery way more fragile and easy to exploit. Well, I'll try to look at it objectively. If you don't know, in Ultimate, Mac can now act after using his side B in the air. It no longer puts him into freefall. Sounds great, right? Well, if you're hit while or after using side B, you don't get it back. Meaning you can't really brute force your way back to the stage with side B when close to the ledge like you could in Smash 4. You now have to be very careful when using it, because if you're hit while using it, even if you still have your jump, you might not be able to make it back. Because side B is by far the better option for grabbing the ledge. Though despite all this, I do believe this to be an overall positive change. I would say his recovery is much better than it was in Smash 4. He now has two options for reaching max airspeed without having to accelerate manually. Something Mac is very bad at. That being jump and now side B, which is very good. Now side B does have a lot of lag after using it in the air, so it's not like it's just free distance. And you have to be very careful when you use it, because the additional fall speed makes it so you have much less options overall. And often it will limit how much you can work around your opponent. But overall, I do believe the move is better off like this. On the ground, however, it's a different story. The move now travels much slower and shorter than it did in Smash 4. It's still powerful and has a lot of active frames, but a distance nerf is very noticeable. It's a mixed bag for sure, and I get why some people don't really like what they did here, but overall I think it is a change for the better. Up B is pretty much the same, there's not really a lot to talk about here. Since it can't be comboed into from down tilt anymore, I doubt you'll ever find a solid use for the ground version, besides maybe platform pressure, but that might just be it. And similarly, counter is very much the same, it now travels a shorter distance, and you can act out of it faster from what it seems. This at least prevents accidental SDs from using counters too close to the ledge, 
which was rare but did happen in Smash 4. Either way, it still functions identically like it did in Smash 4, and by that I mean it's fine but still just underwhelming. So with all of his moves and everything out of the way, it should paint a pretty clear picture of the kind of character Mac is. Though despite all of what I have said so far, all the shortcomings and all the challenges he faces, he could still very much work as a character. You might be at the disadvantage most of the time, but it's not so steep that it's not unbeatable. However, there is one more aspect of this character and this game that I have not talked about yet, and it's where I truly believe Mac falls apart as a character. The one thing that single-handedly will forever keep Mac from being a viable character is platform camping. Platform camping and just camping in general. A lot of people don't really seem to think that platform camping is a viable win condition, not starting out in a match at least. And often situations where camping or running away is optimal only happens when the timer is very low and the one player has the clear advantage. But with Mac, the situation is very different, and in this case impossible not to bring up. Mac loses to platform camping. End of story. Without any solid aerials, he simply doesn't have the tools to pressure platform camping without using highly risky moves. All your opponents need to do is get the percentage lead and then board the platforms. And even if Max somehow managed to take it back, then you're really just back at equal ground. There's never a reason to at least not try. And what characters can platform camp? Well, everyone! Even Mac himself can pretty effectively camp himself out because of the sheer lack of air pressure Mac has. Of course, not every stage is able to be platform camped on, it naturally enough requires platforms. And not even every stage with platforms is optimal for platform camping. But there are enough to the point where it actually becomes a big problem. Obviously, depending on rule sets, some stages are going to be legal while others are not. But for the sake of this video, I'll assume that there are only one triplat stage in the list, because triplat stages are by far the easiest to camp back out on. You can just board the top platform and play very safe, and there is very little he can do to stop you. Aside from Battlefield, there's one other very bad stage for Mac when it comes to platform camping and that is Kalos Pokemon League. The platforms on the sides are high enough to the point where Mac has to double jump or upbeat to get onto them. And if you make a single mistake trying to get onto the platforms, you'll get tossed right off stage. There are other stages where camping is sorta of possible, but is harder, like Hazardless Smash Will. And with the hazards on, this stage is a nightmare. But luckily, it looks like that's not the way we're heading. The platform of Smashville is almost designed to screw Mac over. You can barely just not make it onto it with one jump, meaning you have to put yourself far out in the air with a second jump and then land on it. And the platform is just too tall for up smash to reach, but the platform is much closer to the ground, so you can at least board it easier than in the other two cases. Obviously this can be worked around with stage bands. In the best case scenario you have two bands. If the rule set only has one band and has Kalos or one or more than one triplat, then you might just be completely out of luck. But let's assume you have two. Then you can theoretically avoid the two unplayable stages. But even at that point, you're still throwing away two bands so you can just actually play the game, instead of trying to ban so you can go to stage that you want to play on. With this, you give your opponents free range to choose whatever stage they like, since you have to spend the two bands on the two most campable stages. It's just bad for Mac either way you spin it. And you might say, most people don't platform camp, this is hardly an issue. And well, that is mostly subjective, but I do agree with the statement that most players don't. Most players are more interested in actually playing the game, rather than spending lots of time camping people out and not actually doing anything. It's just more fun. However, that doesn't mean they don't have the option to do it. The circumstances are very important here. To assume that you won't get camped out while playing online or in casual tournaments, where not much is online is fairly safe. But in tournaments with actual prizes, why wouldn't your opponent take advantage of the biggest weakness your character has? They would be stupid not to. It is as if when I'm fighting Ganondorf, I just sometimes let him get close to me for free, because it would just be so mean to exploit Ganondorf's movement problems. So to just assume that people won't exploit this, especially in a high level tournament, is unrealistic. Like I've said, I believe this to be the biggest drawback Mac has. However, this is all dependent on the stage list and the striking rules. So saying anything for definite is very difficult. Seeing how I don't know how the list will look, say, a year from now. But it will always be an issue, just maybe not one that is immediately apparent. It is entwined with Mac's character design. And unless they break his fundamental character design, it will never go away. Mac is probably one of the strangest characters in all of Smash. 
He is, if anything, a noble experiment on what happens if you stretch the limits of a regular character design. Even if it didn't really work out the way they might have initially thought, I can still appreciate the attempt. And despite how much I've spoken poorly of Mac, I by no means hate this character. I would not have made a character for four years if there wasn't something about him I found intriguing. Because when I play Little Mac, I can say for certain that he's a very fun character. Because of his volatile nature, it's not strange that he's a character that has received a lot of both love and hate over the years. Mac may never be a viable character. There's pretty much no buffs that are within reasonability that could fix the many glaring problems he has. But could the current version of Mac be better? Well, certainly. And hopefully in the future we'll see a change of winds. It's not all bad. And like I said earlier, don't let what I've said here today discourage you from playing this character. I didn't make this video to demoralize any Mac players out there but rather to talk about some aspects about this character that I often see ignored. Again, I would love nothing else than for people to prove me wrong here. The odds will be stacked against you, but I've seen stranger things happen. If there's anything I've learned from playing Smash for this long, it is that Smash is a really special game. These games are wild and unpredictable. Sometimes unbelievable things happen. So who am I to say that it won't come a day where Mac is considered a solid character? Who knows? There's still so many more aspects about this game and this character that I have not even touched on, but I feel like I've made my case by now. So that's about all I have. The sun might not look as bright on the horizon as I initially thought, but is that because the sun is rising or setting? I guess only time will tell. And until then, thank you for watching. Okay, but in seriousness, the worst nerf was that they removed the blue costume. Uh, like, come on, why would you? Why would you do that? That was like the best one.